Hello my benevolent builders, my name is Heather and welcome once again to the Mythros channel. In this video, we're going to talk about bamboo fabric. What it is, how it's made, and whether or not it's good for the environment. Spoiler alert, it's not. And before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe and ring the notification bell. it and start with some history. Bamboo fabrics have actually been around for millennia in East Asia, and cultures in India and China have been producing them for generations. And the earliest recorded U.S. patent for bamboo fabrics was from 1864. The use of bamboo fibers for clothing, however, is a 20th century development. So the reason bamboo fabrics are sold as a green or eco-friendly fabric is because of the plant. Bamboo can very easily be a very green or eco-friendly or sustainable crop. It's easy to grow, it can grow in places where other plants don't, it doesn't have to be replanted so it doesn't need a lot of labor, it doesn't need pesticides, it's very hardy, and it grows fast. However, when the demand suddenly spikes for it, forests end up getting clear-cutted, in which case growing it is no longer environmentally friendly. Anyways, so currently most of the world's bamboo is grown in China, which makes sense, it's from that area. However, China is notorious for being non-transparent, and that also pertains to the businesses there, which means it's hard to tell if the bamboo coming from there is being produced in an environmentally friendly way, and if they're violating any human rights at all in the production process. So we don't know what sort of land clearing they're using to produce the bamboo or grow the bamboo. And although, like I said, bamboo doesn't really need pesticides, we don't know if they're using them or not they could still be using pesticides. And China and the businesses that practice there are notorious for human rights abuses. And it's very difficult to get a guarantee on whether or not the business is practicing ethically in any way, but including that. So non-transparency is not a guarantee that they're not doing things ethically. However, it's a big red flag. But also, Chinese companies in general are not highly incentivized to practice ethically. Oftentimes, or dare I say all of the time, in business, it's usually more costly to go about things the ethical way. To be more eco-friendly, to be a better employer, to make a better quality product, the, a product that lasts longer, a product that can be recycled or biodegradable or like has a circular life. Those things always cost more money. And therefore, when a business is not incentivized to do so, it's usually going to err on the side of cost cutting, not ethics. Granted, there are great businesses that do. However, that's not really the majority or the trend or that's not what capitalism rewards. But I digress. <laughs> this new bamboo fabric that was developed in the early 2000s and that kind of exploded in the last few years in the market and got really, really greenwashed, that's bamboo rayon. Rayon in general is not eco-friendly unless it's lyocell rayon which makes the fabric in a closed loop process. And the third kind of bamboo fabric is linen, which is made basically the same way that you make linen from flax plants. And that can be very eco-friendly. So let's dig in a little bit. So the worst but most common and most economical of the three is bamboo rayon or viscose rayon made from bamboo. There are quite a few different ways to make viscose rayon and I don't understand any of them because I'm not a chemist. It's a big list of different chemicals, but I'll try and give you a little overview of one way that it's done. What makes the production of any viscose rayon the same, no matter how it's done, is that they all include the addition of harmful chemicals, which are later wasted, and some of which usually ends up in the biosphere. Possibly all in some cases, depending on how good the company is at dealing with their waste. So, the process of making rayon from bamboo. The bamboo stalk is crushed into chips and soaked in a solution of 18% sodium hydroxide at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius for one to three hours to form an alkali cellulose. So in the next step, excess sodium hydroxide is removed and what's left is dried for 24 hours. Next, they add carbon disulfide to the cellulose to make a gel. And then the remaining carbon disulfide is evaporated, leaving sodium Xanthogenate. I have no idea what that is. Oh god. Then a diluted solution of sodium hydroxide 
is added to the cellulose sodium xanthanogate, which dissolves it into a viscose solution consisting of 5% sodium hydroxide and 7 to 15% bamboo fiber cellulose. That's the rest of it. Finally, this viscose solution is forced through spinneret nozzles into a larger container of diluted sulfuric acid, which hardens the viscose and reconverts it to cellulose bamboo fiber, which are spun into yarns and then it's woven or knitted, however it's gonna be used. So when bamboo is made into viscose rayon, it goes through a long chemical process to be made into a fiber, and then the fiber is put together into a fabric. Because the regular rayon process causes a chemical change in the bamboo cellulose, none of the chemicals in the regular rayon process can be reused. They all become waste after one use. You may think that's obvious, but that's the big difference between regular rayon and lyocell rayon, which is a closed loop system, which we'll talk about in a second. This process is similar to making rayon from any other kind of plant that's used to make rayon. Unfortunately, I guess, this process creates a multitude of really great fabrics that are nice to work with, but they're just really bad for the environment. So closed loop rayon or lyocell. Big difference here is, this process does not chemically alter the structure of the bamboo cellulose, and the chemicals used in this process can be used over and over again, meaning there's much less impact on the environment. So how do they do it? Let me read to you some words I can't really pronounce. The lyocell process uses N-methylmorpholine anoxide to dissolve the bamboo cellulose in a viscose solution. Hydrogen peroxide is added Hydrogen peroxide is added as a stabilizer and the solution is forced through spinnerets into a hardening bath, which is usually a solution of hydrogen peroxide and an alcohol like methanol or ethanol. Then the regenerated bamboo fibers are spun into yarns. So there's a few less steps and these chemicals that they use uh, can be used more than once. This process is a million times better than the rayon process. However, if you're using bamboo that's been grown in a forest that was clear cut just to grow bamboo, or you know, there could be a million other reasons that make certain brands of lyocell non-eco-friendly. This doesn't absolve everything about that particular brand of bamboo fabric, but it's much better than the regular rayon. The problem is this is, as usual, way more expensive than the regular rayon. Even though you can use your chemicals over and over again, somehow it's more expensive. But isn't that always the way? If it's more ethical, it's gonna cost you more money. And if it's less ethical, it's gonna be cheaper and easier. We're always working against our own self-interest for some reason. So it's more expensive. It reduces environmental threats associated with the viscose process. They recapture and reuse 99.5% of all the chemicals. Virtually no waste is created. Virtually is not a solid number, but let's say much less waste is created. So that's bamboo lyocell. And now for bamboo linen. This, if done responsibly, would be the most eco-friendly way to make bamboo fabric. So, bamboo linen. The making of bamboo linen is an almost totally mechanical process, meaning you can do it by hand or with machinery, but it's, but it's not reliant on chemicals like the other ones. So first, bamboo stalks are split mechanically, and then the woody part of the bamboo is rasped off. Then the bamboo strands are treated with enzymes to separate the fibrous materials. Then the individual fibers are combed out, and then they're spun into yarn, and then woven or knitted into fabric. That's it. This process is very similar to, if not the same, as making linen from flax, which is what linen is usually made of. So the fibers from this process are usually silky in texture, strong and long-lasting, considered eco-friendly. However, they're time-consuming, labor-intensive, and therefore very costly. And according to one of my research sources, serve a very specific niche of the textile market. So those of us looking for high-quality, eco-friendly fabrics are still apparently a niche market, which is unfortunate because perhaps if there was somebody producing a lot of this, economies of scale would help reduce the cost a little bit. However, there's still the question of, can any fiber produced at scale be eco-friendly? I'm not sure. All right, so those are the three types of bamboo and how they're produced. Now, of those three types of bamboo, which one is made the most? The first one, bamboo viscose. And which one is the worst for the environment? The first one, bamboo viscose. And which one is the cheapest to buy? The first one, bamboo viscose. 
or bamboo rayon. So bamboo as a fabric has a lot of pros. And as far as its qualities as a fabric and finished product go, there's a lot of reasons to use it. It can be really, really soft. I hope bamboo linen is really soft. Apparently it's silky. Once I get my hands on it, I'll let you know. Uh, it's also very light, it's a light fabric, and apparently it's strong. I'm not totally sure about this. The bamboo that I've worked with is really nice, but I wouldn't really um, qualify it as strong. It apparently has excellent moisture wicking properties. I haven't been paying attention to this. I'm just gonna take their word for it. People who are allergic to other fibers are often not allergic to bamboo. It takes bright dye colors well. And this is important, especially when it comes to being eco-friendly. If you're gonna have a fabric whose raw materials are eco-friendly, the process to make it into a fabric is eco-friendly, but then you go and dye it the way we dye things usually, that can totally negate everything up until that point. Dyeing has its own hosts of problems and dyeing things in an eco-friendly way or sustainable way at scale is still something that is being developed and not necessarily available yet. And some fabrics don't take dye well, meaning they have to be in the dye bath longer and the dye bath has to be kept warm longer using more energy. It has to use more chemicals or stronger chemicals and dye chemicals in general can't be reused. A fabric could be, the raw materials could be eco-friendly, the production could be eco-friendly, everything about it could be eco-friendly, but then you make it teal or blue and suddenly a lot of that goes down the drain. It's just canceled out by the color, which is unfortunate. That's a whole nother video I'll do eventually, but the fact that bamboo is easily dyed is a big plus for it. It drapes very smoothly. I can attest to the bamboo that I've used. I love the way it drapes. It is gorgeous. And it can be used for anything cotton is used for, which again, I would tend to believe. I haven't tested this myself, but I've worked a lot with cotton and I've worked some with bamboo and they seem like comparable fabrics. Antibacterial properties. This seems to be posted on any website as a feature that's selling bamboo products, either the fiber or a finished product, along with it being green or sustainable. But what the research I found said that bamboo itself does have some antibacterial properties, but by the time you get to the finished product, those have all been stripped out of it chemically. There are some antibacterial properties left in the finished bamboo fiber, but it's not anything to write home about. So some cons about bamboo fabric. One of them is it takes a lot of bleach to make bamboo white. You don't have to make a fabric white to dye it a bright color. This, for example, was an off-white when I got it. It was a natural color. But if you get bamboo fabric that's very white, like bridal gown white, it needed a lot of bleach. And even if it was the most eco-friendly bamboo fabric, if it was sustainably farmed and then handcrafted into linen, if it was bleached, well, then it might not be that eco-friendly in the end. And one of the biggest cons about bamboo fabric is the green washing. Green washing is really harmful by itself. Say you have two kinds of fabric and they're both the same environmental wise. They're not good. But let's say they're in the middle in compared to all the other fabric. But one of them is being sold as environmentally friendly. That makes that fabric worse than the one that's just being sold as a regular fabric, I think. Why? Because it's gonna spike the demand for this fabric, making it even less environmentally friendly because scaling something before we know how to make it sustainable and then sustainable at scale often makes it less sustainable. Like when the demand for bamboo stock suddenly spikes, then we're clear cutting forests to grow bamboo and suddenly this amazing plant that is very sustainable by itself becomes unsustainable and environmentally unfriendly simply because of the way we're treating it. Any product that gets greenwashed, I think is probably overall worse for the environment than the equivalent of that product that is not greenwashed. So if you really wanna buy bamboo fabric and you really wanna buy it sustainably, you gotta look out for some things. Now you know that it needs to be bamboo lyocell or bamboo linen. If it's bamboo rayon or bamboo viscose and it doesn't say lyocell, don't buy it. Because I promise you, if they use the lyocell process, it will be there in big bold letters. That'll be one of the first things they want you to know. Because green is a marketing tool these days. Be very wary of anyone who's trying to sell organic bamboo rayon. It doesn't really make sense. The only way that can make sense is if the bamboo was 
raised organically, but then they used organic bamboo in this chemical heavy rayon process. So the bamboo might have been grown organically and possibly sustainably, but I believe it's possible to grow organic plants in unsustainable ways, but that's all canceled out by the rayon process. And if you find bamboo linen, let me know in the comments where you found it. I want some. And if you find bamboo fabric that is stretchy, like this that I'm wearing, it's not gonna be 100% bamboo. It's gonna have some elastin or some polyester in it. And if they're claiming that it's bamboo linen and it's stretchy, it's not. Linen is not a stretchy fabric, so that's not linen. So bamboo fabric can be used for many different things. Right now, the majority of it is used for clothing. As I said, it's a dream to work with, although it's a nightmare to the environment. Well, this stuff. The stuff I've worked with was a dream to work with. However, now I know it's a nightmare to the environment and I won't be buying it again, unfortunately. I wish this was environmentally friendly. It's awesome, <laughs> but don't buy it. If you find some secondhand, go for it. So remember, bamboo rayon or bamboo viscose, bad. Bamboo lyocell, okay. Bamboo linen, the best. And the bamboo future, hopeful. I don't think bamboo as a fiber has reached its full potential in any meaning of the word. I really hope in the future that bamboo lyocell, but more so bamboo linen, will take over the market that bamboo rayon has created and that we'll have more sustainable fabrics to work with that are good to work with, are environmentally friendly, will be biodegradable when we're done with them, all the good things. So what's your experience with bamboo fabric or bamboo clothing, bamboo products that you've seen in stores? What are the claims that you've seen with them? Are they antibacterial? Are they super green? Do they protect you from the sun? I've seen all kinds of different things. I wanna know, and what's your opinion on bamboo fabric? Is there hope for the future of bamboo textiles or should we shut it down because the sudden demand for bamboo is causing things like deforestation? Can bamboo be environmentally friendly? Can we use it responsibly? Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell because I still have not come up with a consistent video schedule. Thanks for watching and see you later.